So I've had a couple of Fusion 360 questions come my way regarding some of the organic shapes that I create, especially on my last paintbrush holder. Um, not a lot of questions, actually only two, but they still count as questions, so I will answer them. Um, I'm going to just start off with the basic shape and um, show everyone how to do a pattern on a path and how to solve a particular problem that comes up when you do some patterns on some paths. So I've made a roughly kidney bean arky shape, which represents the bulk of the paintbrush to design. And what I'm gonna do is extrude out uh, this guy and this guy, uh, 0.35 inches, um, because that's a reasonable place to start. Now for pattern on path, we need to select pattern on path. Oh, sorry, I need to extrude this first. So I'm gonna extrude this real quick, the same height as the other ones, and I'm gonna create it as a new body. And what I'm gonna do is create a pattern on path. So there's our body. Our path is um, one of those kidney bean shapes. Uh, a few things to do, I want to use spacing and I'm going to use 0.625 inches just because that's a fine, fine distance. Uh, I'm going to do a symmetric um, thing. One thing that you will need to do for designs like this anyway is set the orientation. So if I crank this up to let's say 17, um, obviously this is not what we want we need the tops of these rectangles to be um, tangential to this to the path so we'll follow path direction that gives us more or less what we want and I need 21 of these to make a pleasing shape so we now have our pattern and since it was separate body we have a whole ton of separate bodies I am naively going to combine them so we have a single shape and at first glance this looks wonderful we can go ahead and do a sample fillet uh, uh, just as an experiment to see how things are going to look once we start uh, rounding everything out we'll just do point one looks great let's do one of the corners uh, we'll do this one as an example. So fill it this corner, this corner, this corner, this corner. Same point one. And since it's not coming back right away, it means we have some sort of problem. That problem is that on these tight radiuses, these are tangential and do not go far enough into the inner wall in order to create a surface with which to fill it. So if I fill it this, what I'm actually doing is filling this little leg piece here. So we'll just do uh, 0 0.01 or something. Uh, to, and that's not what we want. We want it to be filled in against this body, uh, either for strength or appearances. So what we actually need to do I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this pattern and leave us back where we started. What I'm going to do is push pull this face uh, wherever it is. There it is. And I'm going to go approximately half the distance of our wall thickness, um, which is either it's close to two millimeters if it's not two millimeters. So I'm just going to go a millimeter. And I'm going to push pull this other face the other direction, also one millimeter. And it's still a separate body. So now if we do pattern on path, there's our body. Our path is the same as it was. We want to orient to the path direction. We want to do symmetric. We want to do spacing. We want 0.625 inches apart. And I think we needed 21. So now if we look at our, uh, uh, our render, these are all embedded into the wall on both sides. So you always need to check when you are 
especially when doing patterns because it's hard to it's really easy to forget to check for for lack of a better word connectivity in in, in being embedded in another part um, which can really mess up your edges now you may want that uh, under some circumstances but when you're trying to create a, a more organic looking design or you need to do a fillet or chamfer against an edge either for strength or for looks um, you need that so now if we do a modify and combine, same as before, and if we zoom in on here, we can see that it is now connected. And if I go ahead and fill it now, the same edges, it's now going to fill it against the body that you would expect. And once you have that filleted, you can then uh, do a fillet or a chamfer of some amount, Oop, that was supposed to be 0 0.025, and that is what you want to be able to do. So the design for this uh, particular paintbrush holder, which is linked to in the notes, it's on Thingiverse. It's a little bit more kidney bean shaped. The center also has a very similar um, collection of um, dividers, separators. Um, actually looking at this, I'm thinking that uh, the half-inch inside diameter copper tubing I'm using might actually just slide in here and there'd be enough friction and springiness from this arc here to hold it in place. I may actually try that. Um, uh, the design of the paintbrush holder uh, as it stands now on Thingiverse has two supports with more places to put things in the middle as shown in this picture. Um, but pattern on path um, press pull things into the uh, adjacent walls so you can do a fillet if you need to uh, and so there's complete connection because without that press pull your part is not completely connected it may print okay <clears throat> but you will have uh, uh, a, a, a weaker piece because it's not fully connected uh, hope this was helpful um, and hopefully this answers the two questions I got about how I did that. This is how I did that. Now you can do it too, if you couldn't already. If you could already, and you know a better way to do this, please let me know. I am not a Fusion 360 whiz by any stretch of the imagination. Getting a little bit better, but it's relatively complex software. A lot of options, a lot of different ways to do the same thing. Uh, and I'm always excited to learn new ways to do something that takes a long time, like selecting all these edges for filleting, because right now I'm doing it manually and I don't like that because there's a lot of spaces and it's a little error prone to go through. I, I know there are some ways you can do rule-based um, selections, but I don't know how to do it. Uh, sure would like to. Um, because it's, it's a pain. All right, that's it. Hope this helped. Hope this answered your questions. Check out the paintbrush holder on Thingiverse. Uh, feel free to tip the de developer if you'd like. <laughs>